Okay, I want to do a real quick video here. Um, just uh, answering some things that uh, uh, Lone Star 1776, some things that he said against my video. Um, apologize for the lighting, it's not real good here. Um, eventually, I'm just, this is the living room of the house that we're in right now. And uh, eventually I'm going to have this set up a little bit better. I can't use my desk anymore because it's in another room as my computer desk. Long story. But um, just wanted to make a quick thing here. I just got back from revival meeting. I'm going to be posting those sermons of uh, Brother Mitch Knup. Really good guy. Real good Bible believer. And he's pre-trib as well. So I guess he's a bad guy. But um, you said a couple things there. You know, you say Alex Jones is a good man and that your wife said that I complained about uh, Alex saying revelations. You know, the reason I said that is because Alex oftentimes, you know, he tries to be uh, an expert in all different fields out there, and then he can't even pronounce the book of the Bible correctly. That was the point I was trying to make. But he said very sarcastically that the rapture is like beam me up Scotty. Now, I took very serious offense to that because that's not what the Bible teaches. And to compare Scripture, Bible doctrine, to Star Trek, and I can't, I can't kick him for that. And by the way, you say, I think Alex is a good guy or whatever. Uh, Alex takes some good stands, and I'll stand with him on the issues of uh, gun rights and things and, and most of the Patriot-type issues. You know, I'm not against that. You know, I'm against Obama and everything. But... Uh, and I've said so in sermons. You know, I've played, I have a sermon I'll be posting here on YouTube eventually about Obama calling for a new world order. And, you know, I, I go into that and I say Obama's a wicked man. He is a wicked man, you know. But the fact of the matter is I see Alex one minute talking about the Bible and saying that he's a Christian. And then I see other videos where he's at nightclubs using profanity, including the F word. Um, I'm sorry, I don't believe the man's saved. And looking at, I've listened to Alex since 2001, okay, off and on. So I'm not an, a newbie, you know, to that whole thing. All right, there are people that, that profane, proclaim that they are saved and they're not saved. And I think Alex is one of those. And he is dead wrong on the issue of the rapture. But of course you wouldn't know that because you don't want to watch or listen to the sermon. You say about Billy, the end time watchman. Well, if you would listen to the sermon, you would hear Billy use the NIV and what he calls the Greek to correct the King James Bible. But again, brother, you're not listening to the sermons. See, you, you just have passed judgment. You know, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13 says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, listen, you know, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Okay? I mean... Don't take offense to this, but aren't you man enough to listen to a, three hours of, of a guy preaching? You can listen to Dr. Ruckman preach and not get offended at his, his harsh, crude ways and things, but you can't listen to a, a guy that like me for three hours? Is that doctrine so important to you, this post-trib rapture thing, that you can't have your beliefs questioned? And you say, well, I ought to read these books and things by these post-tribbers, you know, and, and stuff, and that would convince me. What do you think I made this sermon about? I took all the best arguments for a post-trib rapture, and I refuted them. That's what the sermon's about. Okay? And by the way, speaking about Dr. Ruckman, are you aware of his stand on the rapture? His stand is pre-trib, just like me. And he's a lot more militant than I am. Okay? You need to look at some of this stuff. You need to look at both sides. And by the way, to say that we are the Jews now or something like that, brother, that is satanic. Okay? I'm not saying you're a Satanist. I'm not saying you're lost. Don't go off on that. I'm saying to say that the Christians now have replaced Israel, read Romans chapter 11. God's not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Paul is a Jew after the flesh. Okay, he talks about of the tribe of Benjamin, of the seed of Abraham. He wasn't talking about being an inward Jew or something like this. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's, it's satanic Roman Catholic philosophy that the church has replaced Israel. 
nothing could be further from the truth. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, this coming time period, nowhere in the Bible does it actually say the Great Tribulation. The actual time is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? God called him, his name was Jacob, but God called him Israel. Okay? It's the time of Israel's trouble, not the church. Listen to the study. Okay? Take some time and listen to the study. Instead of getting all mad and saying, I could only stomach the first couple minutes. I mean, come on, man. You know, listen to it. Consider what's being said. Look at both sides. I have. That was the whole point of the study. And by the way, let me say this. That sermon, The post of Rapture Thieves, parts one through three, which is what that's why it's three hours in length, that sermon has been on the internet for years now on Sermon Audio, our, our old church account on Sermon Audio. And you know the interesting thing? It's fluctuated a little bit over the years, but most of the time there are twice as many views, people looking at what the sermon's about, as there are downloads. So I've seen this thing, I see it in the comments of the video. People are bringing up points, what about this, what about that? And I answer those points in my sermon. What that's telling me is, People are not listening to the sermon. They're so dead set on this idea that the body of Christ goes through the tribulation, goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. They're just so, they got to hold on to that. And it's like, I can't, I can't listen to anything else. And I've seen your comments, you know. Oh, well, I've heard this garbage before and I don't have time for it. Come on. Proverbs 18.13. Think about that. And by the way, you say that uh, my channel, you know, that I, I don't cut on sodomites, so that's why I'm able to upload videos for hours and hours and hours. You know, I don't know why they allowed me to, to upload videos. I know my all my videos that I've produced are non-copyrighted. So my DVDs, they go out and they're, they're being spread all over the place. And so I guess maybe that had something to do with it. I have no idea. You know, I have a, I have a sermon there again. The sin of Sodom it has nothing to do with it. Okay, I there have been numerous videos where I talk about sodomites. You know, the Bible term for queers. I'm not afraid to talk about it, so don't pull that off either. You know, the whole thing is, brother, you need to look at the both sides of this issue. Okay, you're not a Jew. All right, you're not a spiritual Jew. All right, there's neither Jew nor Gentile in, in God's sight. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Right now you are a Christian. The body of Christ ends with the rapture. Okay, It's called right division of Scripture. And then you say, the question you brought up there, what about the dead? Where's the resurrection of the dead? Well, let me ask you that question. Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, and I, I think there's another portion of the book of Luke, that talks about the second coming. Please show me a rapture of, or a resurrection of the dead there. Matthew chapter 24, one's in the field, one's taken, the other's left. Two women grinding at the mill, one's taken, the other's left. Two men in one bed, one's taken, the other left. Where does it say anything about dead saints coming up? It doesn't, you see, because there are different parts of the resurrection. There again, that's another thing people confuse. They think that resurrection means one resurrection. No, there are three resurrections. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Again, this is all covered in the study. Open your mind. Go in there and listen to it. Look up the scriptures. You know, another thing that a lot of the post-tribbers do, they'll, they'll refer to church fathers. And it's interesting because in the study, and actually one of the pictures there on the sermon, one of those pictures is a Franciscan friar. And I have another Catholic priest, or not, he's not a priest, he's a Catholic apologist. They're all using the same arguments to attack the pre-trib rapture. I find it kind of odd that professing Christians are using the same arguments as Roman Catholics. And by the way, Greek Orthodox as well. Okay? These heretical cults out there that hate Christians and they're using the exact same arguments to disprove the pre-trib rapture as Bible-believing Christians. And you say, 
you took particular offense to the fact that I said that somebody who is not pre-trib is not looking forward to Jesus Christ coming back. And I've had, had, had you know, people do that all the time. Well, that's not true. Uh, I'm afraid it is. You see, you can say, well, we're looking forward to him, to him coming back at the end of the tribulation. Well, what makes you think that you're going to survive? If you're really expecting Jesus Christ to pour out wrath on you, and you, and you say, well, the wrath doesn't start till halfway through. That's another lie, okay? The vials of wrath, yeah. But if you think Jesus Christ unleashing the Antichrist on the earth, and war, famine, death, the, the four horsemen in Revelation chapter 6, that's not the wrath of God, you know? You have been deceived, brother, and you need to look at this thing objectively. Take some time, open your mind, listen to the sermon before you start calling me a Pharisee and whatever else. I've been through it all. Take some time and listen to it, okay? That's all I have to say about the matter.